Hey everyone, this is your question with Justin Terry. Let's go, my guy. Justin Terry is the superintendent of Forney ISD. I was actually in Forney. Well, how long ago was that now? 2016? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it's been that long. Seven, seven, eight years ago. Listen, I I actually, it's funny because I still remember it very vividly. So I'm going to give you a little little shout out to all the people in Forney. I don't know if anyone's still there other than you. I I think it's because we created a video wrap for you to intro. I'll have to send it to you if you remember. remember Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, from the great state of Texas, Absolutely love the place. Um, one of the things that, and you know this too, uh, Texas is a really special place in my heart. They really gravitated to my work. And I think it was just timing because innovators mindset came out right when they really did started focusing on districts of innovation. Right. So it wasn't like I was the first thing that I ever talked about innovation, but man, did I hit it right <laughs> in Texas. You nailed it. Yeah, yeah, I did. It was totally accidental. Mm-hmm. There's, there's actually a really great story. Um, I don't know. And it's really talk about timing. And I know Justin, the reason, uh, we've connected so well as he's really focused on innovation. Uh, there's a story about um, Uber not being the first like car share service, but actually there's other ones before, but Uber came right around the time of the financial crisis um, in the US. So it was around 2008, 2009. And what was different about Uber is that a bunch of people lost their jobs, but they had cars. So immediately they had a fleet which right. is really fascinating. So Uber became Uber. That's why we say like, hey, like hit up an Uber, even if we're using Lyft, because not because they were like the first, but because of the timing. So I always think about that. I think that's like a, a really, I don't know if anyone will care about that story, but <laughs> that's that was, really, I thought it was fascinating. Sometimes it's not about having the right idea. It's about doing the right thing at the right time. I don't uh, know. There's no talking. doubt. No yeah. doubt about that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> So in Forney, uh, there's some really innovative things happening, and we're going to talk about that more on our other podcast. But I just want to kind of learn about some of your experience, some of the things that, you know, inspired you to become a teacher. So uh, I know Justin is actually, you know, uh, superintendent. He's a school administrator, taught, you know, high school for for a, a little while. But when you think about a teacher that inspired you, who's someone you think of and why? Uh, you know, I mean, I wish I had that that crazy incredible story you know that that so many people have about how um you know a t- one teacher really changed my life you know from but but i don't i I've, I've always just been um in a situation where i was around educators hmm. so my dad if, if i really had to say you know I, he was a teacher and a coach for you know for years and so i grew up in an educator's house and uh so i was around so many different impactful educators that um I mean, I'd have to actually point to him. He was my baseball coach in high school. Um, and man, what a, what a mentor he was for me. Uh, Cause he's, he's so, you know, the good and the bad, I got to see, you know, him at work and him at home and uh, you know, it was the same person, but it was about, you know, just doing good for others. And uh, you know, he inter- introduced me obviously to a lot of educators um, that, and, and I had some, you know, probably I could name elementary, middle high school that, that all had huge impacts, even in college. Uh, but, but there's something about the, the give of the educator. And I think he just, uh, he resembled that so much in my life as a father, but also, you know, as a coach and a teacher. So, I mean, sorry, I got to say my dad, uh, oh. that, that, dad. Yeah. I love it. you know, Hey, so I'm actually curious about this when, you know, you, your dad, you, he taught the whole time of his career. Like, was he a teacher the entire time? No, he's uh, he was an English professor actually, and then he went back to to K twelve and taught high school his, um, English there, and you know, he was he was a doctor in in as a professor and um and uh, he was a coach and um he I'll never forget this too. He always said you you never call me Doctor Terry, you always call me Coach uh, because it was a more respectable title. Uh, yeah, wow. you know, and there's something to that, but no, he uh, he he actually was an athletic director as well, so I kind of got to see the the leadership side of it in his career and how he grew. Okay. And was he excited when he became a superintendent? I'm sorry. Was he excited when he became a superintendent? Yeah, I think so. I, he's proud, um, no doubt. I mean, um, he was. He was. He's he. And he's my biggest fan, and that's pretty cool to be able to pick up the phone and hear that every day. I actually remember when I became a principal, I called my mom and I said, "Yeah, like I got a principal," and she's like, "You?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because uh, you know, I'm still like her her baby, and she's like, "Really?" It's like someone's trusting you, so right. Good luck for yeah. you. So yeah. that's, that's my memory. Hey, 
Yeah, you kind of look back and you go, oh, that happened. Yeah, it did. <laughs> I'm here. I love it. I love it. All right. So you you currently, you know, as I said, you're a superintendent right now. Uh, I know you served in several different roles. I know you also coach too. And, you know, coaching was, when you said that, that really resonated with me, the idea, mm-hmm. you know, coach, like, you know, I still have people I coached 20 some years ago who call me coach. That's right. one of the nicest things here. So when you think of like an administrator, principal, superintendent, even a coach, um, who's someone that really inspired you and why? So in my first teaching job, I was in a really small um, a school in uh, Mildred, Texas. Um, and, um, it, you know, I had the superintendent. He just took me under his wing at that point in time. Uh, his name was Doug Lane. He's actually uh, passed now, but he uh, he saw something in me. I did, um, and, and, you know, just walked up to me literally after my third year of teaching and said, congratulations. I said, what do you mean? Congratulations. And he said, uh, you know, you're going to be the first assistant principal we've ever had here. I, man, I didn't, to be honest with you, I didn't even have my teacher certification, much less even <laughs> thought about my administrator certification. Uh, but, but he saw something in me and um, really I valued his, his mentorship and leadership. And eventually, you know, he's one of those guys where he looked and he said, you know, I, I got, I don't have enough else for you. So he started sending me off to other superintendents to wow. kind of mentor under and, 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 and understand what leadership was really about. So um, I have to say Doug Lane, uh, by far was, was probably one of the biggest impacts in my career. I mean, I've got to work with great ones as well, like John Fuller and, um, you know, people like that, but, uh, he's, I had, it starts with, with Doug Lane and kind of put me on the track. Give it up for Doug. Yep. Doug, you know, the, one of the, I've been doing this question forever and the thing you said it, and I've heard it a million times. I always point out a lot of times the best administrators, best teachers, they, they, people always say they saw something in me. I didn't even see it myself. Right. And yeah. one of the things I truly, truly appreciate in what you shared is that sometimes they know that you might be maybe outgrown some of their advice, or you might be going in a little bit different direction, but then they make that connection and you can see how powerful that is. Cause they want the best for you. Uh, I remember one of my superintendents, I said, I want to be, you know, she said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be a superintendent. She's like, why? <laughs> Why yeah, want to do that. Right. And I said, like, why wouldn't I? And she's like, no, there, there's other, there's spaces for you. She said, you'd be great. Like you'd be great at it, but I just see you kind of going in a different direction. So I want you to connect with these people. And it was like kind of interesting. Right. Because I thought, you know, and I'm not saying, you know, I thought that was, that was a path. I do this, then I become this, become this, but she just saw something different for me. And, uh, and I like really appreciated that. And I, you know, I think I've enjoyed kind of what I do today. I don't know. I don't want to kind of put you in the spot. I don't know. I didn't bit like being superintendent as much. I know you love it, but it's well. Let's just say it's something new every day. How about that, George? You know, <laughs> it, the job stays There's fun because right. it's something new every day, right? Uh, no, it's okay. it is great. All right, you've been in education for a while. You grew up, you know, basically you grew up in the profession. So if you can go back to your very first year and maybe talk to yourself, give yourself some advice, what would that advice be? Uh, you know, that's a, that's a tough question, but I, but I'm not going to lie. I, I, uh, you know, I think when we walk into education as teachers and like I said, I, I mean, I wasn't even certified. I was going to be a coach. And next thing I know, I'm, I'm teaching math and all the way up to calculus. And I didn't know what I was doing. I don't think a lot of our teachers do. And, um, uh, you know, it's like I wanted to do so many things, but, but I think some of the structures that we are given coming in really drive, um, and limit really what we could have done in the classroom. And I, I go back and I'm, this is not a, just a ploy because I'm talking to you, but I mean, I re- we really <laughs> embrace the innovators or I'm sorry, the in, innovation inside the box. And I, I think, I think if I was to tell my, my first year teacher self, um, one piece of advice, it would have been, you can do anything you want uh, for kids if it's right. It, no matter what the box or the textbook or the standards or the accountability system or, or whatever it is, you can still create engaging environments, innovative um, environments and opportunities for kids, uh, even within the rules of the game that we have to live within. And, and I, man, I think that would have made a, a huge impact on, on the kids I worked with. You know, I, I, I was thinking as you're talking about this, I remember, you know, working with teachers just entering the profession and they would have, they would show some frustration working with, um, 
like a, like an internship, right? So they would be with a teacher, they're coming out of college, they'd have like four months, whatever. And I don't know if this is the best advice, but this is what I say to them. I'm like, listen, do what you need to do to get the best evaluation possible. Like really, that's that you wanna get in. Like you wanna get in and you wanna make sure you get a really good evaluation. So you may not necessarily agree with some of the things, but you want that evaluation to be good because once you get in, then you can do really what you want to have always achieved. And I think that really matters to me. And I say, that's the thing is that you don't necessarily have to teach the way you're taught. You know, you don't have to be kind of limited that, you know, you do, you know, a lot of people say like, Hey, we got to tear down the system. Well, while we're in the system, we got to constantly evolve. And that's why I talk about the notion of innovation of the box and really kind of push from inside as well. And I think that was really, really important advice. So I really appreciate you say that. I don't know if that maybe people like, you know, don't think that's a good advice, but can't really, you know, change anything for kids. If you're not, you know, not in the profession at all. That's right. And you got to adapt to what their needs are. And you know, that, that doesn't work within a textbook. Uh, many times. And so, um, you know, relationships that, that came easy. I think that comes easy for a lot of educators because that's what their heart and their passions are. But um, sometimes if we'll just listen and figure out what the rules of the game are, we can make it happen for those guys. Always adjust. Love it, man. All right. So yep. make sure you connect with with Justin. Uh, Co- well, can I call you coach now? Yeah, man. Sure. A m- much more respectable title than Dr. Terry. That's what I'm you know, it, it's funny because I always thought, you know, uh, innovators mindset and Babe Ruth totally go together. <laughs> so I appreciate you having them like, you know, kind of side by side there. So there you go. Baseball guy. So make sure you connect with Justin. Uh, make sure Justin say we're hi to everyone in Forney for me. Absolutely. A wonderful district. And thank you so much for listening. I hope you all have a wonderful day.